हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो इन प्रीवियस टू लेक्चर्स वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द प्लेट थियरी ऑफ क्रोमैटोग्राफी एज वेल एज वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द टर्म्स इन्वॉल्व इन द क्रोमैटोग्राफी नाउ टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस विद द रेट थियरी ऑफ क्रोमैटोग्राफी विद वैंडेमिटर इक्वेशन तो व्हाट इज दिस रेट थियरी दैट विल सी जनरली इन केस ऑफ क्रोमैटोग्राफी व्हाट वी ऑब्जर्व दैट वेन क्रोमैटोग्राम इज देयर at that time we get a chromatographic peak and which is similar to the gaussian curve that means when we are going to uh, draw column va column variables against the retention time or retention volume at that time we got this gaussian curve as a chromatographic peak but if chromatographic column is truly ideal then number of theoretical plate will be very high that is maximum number of theoretical plates will be there and due to this this width of the pick that will get reduced and for ideal column it is considered that you will not get this width the width will be equals to zero and instead of such gaussian curve or instead of such pick a single line must be observed like this that is the pick width must be zero but actually it's not so actually we are not going to get such type of a single line instead of that we always get a gaussian curve so why such things are happen why this uh, gaussian curve is observed instead of a single line that we are going to discuss so numeric numerous experimental and mathematical expressions related to plate height and column variables that is either uh, tr or vr have been put forward and they are all applied with varying degree of success but none of this theory or mathematical expression or experiments are entirely adequate to explain the complex physical interaction and effects that leads to this band broadening or that leads to this zone broadening so some do in fact but have been of considerable use so one of this expression is your van demeter equation so we'll discuss this van demeter equation very first i'll tell you that how this van der meter equation is given or how it is expressed it is expressed as h equals to a plus b by u plus cu so what is this h a b by u cu that one by one we are going to discuss so h is nothing but your hdp or height equivalent to theoretical plate a is your first variable that is multi path term or also known as eddy diffusion the second is d by u is longitudinal diffusion term and cu is nothing but the mass transfer term now this c coefficient is again split into two that is one is for stationary phase and second is for mobile phase so now we'll see the details of this each and every variable so very first we'll discuss about the a that is the multi path term multi path term which is denoted by a or also known as eddy diffusion now zone broadening or band broadening arises from the multiple pathways by which molecules can find its way through the column now what happens suppose i'm going to draw the magnified view of the column so column is say packed so these are the column packings now what will happen suppose your component get separated over here and that separated components when eluted out at that time it will travel through this column so i'm going to consider two or three molecules of this say this is first molecule this is your second molecule 
this is your third molecule so you will observe that the component molecules does not travel in a straight line path the length of the pathways of different molecule of same species may be different you can see that molecule 1 takes this path molecule 2 takes this path and molecule 3 takes this path so these molecules are of same species they are separated in a same band but when they are going to elute out at that time they are going to take a different path and due to this what will happen the resident time for the molecule of same species in the column will be different so solute molecules of same species reaches at the end of the column over the time interval which leads to band broadening so what will happen some molecules will take straight line path they will reaches to your you can say that or elute out or they will reaches to your <coughs> detector very quickly so such molecules are very less hence they will gives you signal of very less molecules but maximum molecules will travel with somewhat same time interval and hence they will reaches to the detector at near about same time but some molecules will take a very long path and they will reaches to the detector after a span of time and so due to this what will happen we are going to observe such type of band broadening this effect is known as a eddy diffusion this effect is known as a eddy diffusion and it is directly proportional to the diameter of particles making up the column packing and also it is proportional to the flow rate of mobile phase so what will happen if your flow rate of mobile phase is low then molecules will have time and they will take a numerous pathways and hence the bond broadening band broadening is observed while at moderate or at high uh, you can say that uh, flow rate sufficient time is not available to take numerous paths so what will happen the molecules will reaches to the detector or elute out from the column at near about same time and hence the band broadening is reduced so this contribution from the non equal path is known as a multi path term or also known as a eddy diffusion now we have to discuss the next that is the longitudinal diffusion term longitudinal diffusion term which is denoted by b by u okay, which is denoted by b by u now what is this longitudinal diffusion term when the solute molecules get spread on the column in the form of band the concentration profile is established so again i am going to draw the column and this is your component molecules which are separated in the form of band the concentration profile as i have told you that it is established so what is a concentration profile the concentration profile is a profile or you can say that the concentration of the molecules is not uniform in this band the concentration of the molecules is maximum in the center of the band okay and as you go away from the center that is whether it may be below or above the center the concentration is less or minimum so this will give rise to diffusion which causes band broadening so what will happen whenever this uh, band or you can say that separated component band 
is eluted out at that time very first what will happen these are the concentration having a very less molecules so these molecules will reaches to the detector first and later on a high concentration is there again a same type of band broadening will be observed so this contribution from the diffusion along the <coughs> band is known as the longitudinal diffusion the longitudinal diffusion is proportional to the mobile phase diffusion coefficient which is equal to the rate of migration under a unit concentration gradient and it is inversely proportional to the mobile phase velocity so when you are going to lower the velocity at that time velocity of mobile phase at that time this concentration profile will not establish instead of that the molecules will get uniformly distributed throughout the band now we have to discuss with the next that is mass transfer term mass transfer term which is denoted by cu now what is this mass transfer term band broadening from the mass transfer will occurs because the front of the band will move faster than the predicted rate while rear of the band will move slower than the predicted rate so what will happen over here i have explained you that concentration profile will get set or get established now what will happen suppose this is a band now don't consider the concentration profile when this band is going to elute out or it is uh, going when you are going to remove it by using eluting agent at that time what will happen the molecules which are present at the front of the band they will move very fast as compared to the rear of the band and due to this such type of band broadening is observed so if velocity of mobile phase is high then all molecules will move at the similar rate and band broadening will be less so hope that you got all these three in first multiple path term that means the molecules will take different different path therefore they reaches or elute out at different time and hence band broadening is observed second is longitudinal diffusion that is when they get separated in the form of band the concentration profile will establish and due to this concentration profile again band broadening is observed while in mass transfer the front of the band will moves with somewhat higher speed and rear of the band moves with the somewhat lower speed and due to that again the band broadening is observed so all this depends on the specially velocity of the mobile phase for the first that is for the eddy diffusion and for the mass transfer first and third term we need the speed of the mobile phase should be high but for the second term that is for the longitudinal diffusion term we need the mobile uh, flow rate mobile uh, phase flow rate somewhat lower so by maintaining the moderate speed we are able to reduce the band broadening now all these contributions are incorporated in van der meter equation so van der meter equation as we know it is given as h equals to a plus b by u plus cu so this term c is splitted into two that is cs plus cm into u so cs indicates the coefficient for stationary phase cm indicates the coefficient for mobile phase now this all three contributions are shown graphically also so a graph of detector signal against the column variable that is h or hetp in centimeter against flow rate of the mobile phase in centimeter per second is drawn so if you draw all these variables uh, individually then you will get such type of graphical presentation this is a presentation for term a 
this is a presentation for b by u that is longitudinal diffusion and this is a individual presentation for term cu but if all three contributions are shown then it will shows you a single curve a plus b by u plus cu so this dashed line indicates individual contribution while solid curve gives the net effect due to all these three contributions so this is given by the van dimeter equation which gives us very correct prediction for the rate theory of the chromatography so that's all for the rate theory of chromatography thank you